DelicateBeats.com. Hey guys, welcome back. JT here for DelicateBeats.com. Today I want to show you how to chop samples in contact. Let's go. All right, so first let me play you the little loop we are going to recreate chopping samples and loops in contact. So as you can hear, you know, chopping samples is not only reserved to hip hop producers. Now to create the chords, I'm going to insert a new MIDI track on which I'm going to load up an instance of contact. And right here I have a little folder that contains all of my original sounds. So I'm going to drag the chords in this black space here, drop it and automatically contact creates a new instrument. You want to open the hood by clicking on the wrench icon here and you want to open up the wave editor to see what we are working with. Now if I press on my MIDI keyboard, it's going to play the original sample. Next you want to activate the grid and go to the auto setting. And by moving this slider left and right, you see that contact automatically pinpoints the different hits or chords in this sample. So once you found the sweet spot, you want to open the mapping editor and open the sync slice tab down here in the wave editor. And when I'm going to click on drag MIDI to host, contact is going to create an individual sample zone for each of those uh, chords. That means that it's going to lay all of the individual chords on the MIDI keys on my keyboard. Now we are going to delete the original zone and move these bad boys up, let's say to C3. Now I know the keyboardist played the chord progression twice, so I'm going to delete the last four zones and work only with the first four ones. Let's crank up the volume a bit. Now you might have noticed that in my beat the chords are pitched up so there are two ways to do that. You can either click on an individual zone and use the tune setting here or you can move all four at the same time by using this tune knob right here at the top. So let's move them up four semitones and now we have this. And now we have the instrument that's going to allow us to play the chord progression in the beat. So let's uh, record that. And we have the chords. Now there is a bit more processing on the original track. Let me show you real quick what the effects were. A little bit of EQ, remove the low frequencies and some of the mids. Next up I used this Easy Mix plugin which is really cool for this one click mixing experience. In this case I used an ambient guitar amp just for the nice little reverb trail using sidechain compression, using the kick as a trigger. This is a nice little trick that I learned from future bass producers. And finally, some more reverb. All right, super long decay. Just a little touch on the mix, just to make the trail even longer. Let me show you the before and after on the original track so you have an idea of what the effect chain did to the sound. And with the effects, All right, let's move on with the drums. I'm going to create a new MIDI track here. Let's drag and drop our drum loop in contact. Open up the advanced settings. Let's open the wave editor, activate the grid. And um, I wanna show you a little bug that I found with contact five. Now, in this case, contact has a hard time pinpointing the right um, transients so what you want to do when that happens is just you know 
delete your original MIDI track, create a new one, load up Contact 5 again, drag and drop your sample, and usually the second time is the right one. In this case, you know, if we zoom in on the track, you see that now Contact has automatically pinpointed each of the individual drum hits in our drum loop. Let's open up the mapping editor and because I know that there are way more hits in this new loop, what I'm going to do is drag the original zone all the way up to let's say C3 and that way when I go to my sync slice tab and click on drag MIDI to host, you see that we are going to have enough space to lay down all of the new zones. Again, let's de delete the original zone. Let's grab all of our new zones and move them up to C2. And now I can play my chopped up drum loop. Now I only want to keep three zones in this particular drum loop. I wanted to keep this kick, this little snap clap and this bigger clap. So when you want to be sure what zones you're going to keep, press on your MIDI keyboard and pinpoint where the little red line goes. That way you can just know that you're not going to delete the good zone. And then let's keep the first two ones, which were the kick and the clap. And as a per personal preference, I like to lay, uh, lay down my my drum zones on white keys, in this case C, D, and E. All right. I'm not I'm not going to replay the MIDI. Let me just show you a bit of the processing that I did. In this case, I just removed a lot of um, you know low frequencies, low mid frequencies that I'm going to keep for the bass, and I tamed a bit of the highs because this uh, the snap was a bit you know harsh when I limited my master. So this is it for the drums. Now let's move on to our third and last sound, which was a mallet type sound. So again, let's load up contact. Let's drag and drop our sample in contact. Open the hood, wave editor. And then in this case, I didn't use all of these little um, mallet hits. I really just used the first one. So instead of using the grid, I can just move the end point at the very end of the first note and this is really just what I want to use. So then you don't have to go to the mapping editor, contacts automatically going to you know lay this one hit on each of the individual notes and then you can just play whatever melody you fancy. Let me show you the processing that was done on this track. So, this original track. So with, again, my favorite reverb, the Valhalla Vintage Verb. A little bit of EQ to remove the low frequencies, sub bass territory. Again, sidechain compression using the kick as a trigger. And finally, a little bit of delay. And this is the final result for the mallet track. There are some more sounds in the beat, obviously. I didn't use uh, contact to chop these samples. I used, a, let, let me show you. So Serum for the sub bass, there's a really nice, you know, preset that comes with, uh, you know, a factory preset that comes with uh, Serum that is sub underscore DSKPRC. Sounds like this. Let me activate my master EQ and limiter. That way you're gonna hear better all of the sounds. I have this little percussion loop that I dragged, just dragged them, dragged it and dropped it in um, Ableton Live. And finally, I recorded myself singing.
as you can see I'm not uh, really a good singer but with autotune pinch pitching it up an octave using easy mix as an effect some more reverb did a bit of EQ here to remove the sub frequencies and make it less harsh by removing some of the high mids and finally an auto filter you get this kind of vocal sample and finally I doubled the clap from my drum loop with this snap here and you get this as a final result